Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. In today's video I want to do something a little bit different and I'm just going to work on the rebuilding these bombers that blew themselves up while I just talk about a few things. As the thumbnail shows we're on episode 10 of this second series that I started on the channel and I want to thank you all for watching and enjoying my content. I really am happy making content even if I'm only getting a few views on the videos it still makes me happy that I'm making content that somebody can enjoy. So. Thank you for watching my videos, and I hope you stick around to watch more of them in the future. One thing I've seen with Minecraft YouTubers is a lot of people do hardcore worlds where they do the perfect start in Minecraft, and I think that the perfect start is a little overrated. Like, why are you trying to rush through the game so quickly? I just like to play the game how I see fit, and I want to play it at my own pace where I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Like in the first few videos, I didn't go and get diamonds right away, I didn't waste time doing all that and getting all that right away when I could do stuff that I find enjoyable, like making a fun starter house, making a few farms, and just getting started off with the new area of the world. And I also think that the perfect start just isn't right for everybody. Like everybody has a different idea of what the perfect start is. And all these videos on YouTube that are the perfect start, in quotations, are like, what if I want to do this at the beginning of the game instead of doing whatever you're doing, going and getting netherite right away isn't what I want to do at the beginning of my game. I don't see that as a priority. I see just getting a few farms started and making a small house as a priority, and the ender dragon doesn't have to come for a long time. And I think I showed that in my videos, where I just got to the ender dragon in episode 7, and now that I have defeated the Ender Dragon, I can do a lot more, but it was never a priority, it just slowed down my gameplay a little bit before I got the Elytra, and I could really enjoy those first few videos, just making small builds and doing what I wanted, and now I can get to bigger projects that are a lot more fulfilling, but they're no better than those builds right at the beginning that were smaller, but they took just as much time, and they were just as fun to build. And now I want to move on to talking about my thoughts on the 1.20 update. I think that overall the update's great. It adds cherry blossom trees, the new bamboo types, armor trims, and it also adds the new trial runes, which I think are really cool. They add quite a bit of new exploration to the game, and I obviously haven't explored them yet in this series, and I'm planning on doing that in the near future because I want to get the sniffers and all the different types of pottery shards. I think that that could be a fun adventure to go and find all those but they're not a priority to me, and exploring has never really been a priority to me in this game. It's more been go out, get the stuff, and then come back to my base where I can build something really cool with all the new stuff. And that is probably what I'm going to do with the new 1.20 items, is find a whole bunch of new pottery shards and use them in my builds to make them better and to enhance my overall base. I do think that 1.20 was a little small on the update side, I don't think it added in anything crazy, but I also understand from a coding perspective that some of the stuff was very hard to implement, like the new trial runes, they went through multiple implementations of getting them to place at the right height in the world no matter where they were spawning, whereas some of them spawned low to the ground and the, there was no hills so they had to be really far in, and then other ones were spawning in hills but right on the edge so then they had to reform the terrain around those. And I understand understand that that's a lot of work, but I do think they could have implemented more into this update and other recent updates than just a few small things and a biome change. I also think that the mob votes that they do every year just are a little underwhelming. All three mobs don't really add anything to the game, they just kind of are there and they may add like one small change. But it's nothing major, and I want to see a major change to the game. I think in the near future, Minecraft is going to have to choose between staying the same game as it was for the last 12 years, or how however long the game has been out, or it's going to have to pivot and add in something new that's huge. And I think that they might do that with the new Warden kind of biome, because they seem to put a portal frame in the ancient cities, but they haven't done anything with it. And I really hope they do do something big with those portal frames, because I think that that could be a really cool addition to the game. A whole new biome would change the game dramatically, and I think that that would be great for the overall game to get more people to come into the game, to get more people making content, which is great, and overall I think it could just improve the game for 
everybody that plays it, the explorers, the builders, the redstoners, I think that a new Warden Dimension could completely change the game, and I really hope they implement it. Those are all the topics that I wanted to talk about today. Like I had said at the beginning, I want to thank y'all for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoy them because they are a ton of fun to create and having people watch them just makes it so much better. But now onto the rest of the video. I ran all of the TNT dupers that I just finished making and it cleared out the rest of the area except for this one line here and I didn't think that I needed to rebuild this one but I'll probably just do that in between episodes and get that over with because I didn't even realize that I had to rebuild that one. But all the rest of the area is cleared out besides the water and all of these floating blocks and it is looking much better without the huge chunk right here specifically. That was one thing that I wanted to get rid of. Now that this is cleared out for the most part, I want to move on with more progress in this area. And what I want to do now is make an area right in the middle of this that is like my sorting system kind of bulk storage for all of these different farms that I plan on putting in here. And the main farms that I plan on putting in here very soon are a huge iron farm even bigger than my last iron farm in the other part of the world and i also want to put in other farms like another large melon and pumpkin farm maybe some automatic wheat farms some carrot potato farms everything you could possibly think of to farm i want to put in this area but i need to go deeper obviously to put everything in here so for now i'm just going to do simple farms that don't involve mobs or anything like that but I want to get a sorting system started first, so I'm going to plan on putting it right in the center, and I've got to find where the center is, and then I'll build up and decide where I'm going to place this platform. Right here seems to be the center of the creeper farm, so this is where I'm going to build up for this initial platform. And I think I'm going to go up around 25 blocks just to add some height between the lower ground and this platform so that I can fit more of the TNT dupers below it without destroying everything. It looks like there's some axolotls playing over there which could be interesting to catch and maybe use for something at some point. But for now I'm just going to work on this sorter and 25 blocks should be right here I think. So that'd be 23, this is actually 26 blocks which I think works out just fine. That'll leave 25 blocks in between the platform and the ground. So I'm going to just make a small platform right here, and then I will give you a general layout of what I'm planning on doing for the sorting system. I'm not going to be making it in this episode, because it takes a lot. I'm planning on using all kinds of shulker box loaders and sorters, so this is going to be a very big sorting system for just a few small items, because I'm planning on putting a lot of items through it, even though there's not going to be a lot of different types of items. There's going to be a lot of different items coming through here, like gunpowder, iron, roses from the iron farm and then all the different things i'm planning on farming now with this basic layout in place i can kind of explain what i plan on doing and the basics are there's going to be chests going along all of these edges uh, like so and they might be alternating with chest block chest block chest block because i'm not exactly sure how the item streams are going to work it might have to be water streams coming into the chests. because out here on these four different platforms i want to put different shulker box loaders that have a whole bunch of sorters going into them so that each item is completely picked up by the farm i don't want any items to be lost in the sorting system so that's why each of these platforms is like seven long because I'm planning on having that many sorters for each item. I'm not sure if all the water streams from different farms are going to connect or not, and I might not even have to use sorters at all, except for maybe on the iron farm that produces multiple different items, and I want some of them sorted out and turned into bone meal, and some of them put straight into shulker boxes as the iron. So that's why I have it laid out like this, is these outer platforms are going to be where the shulker box loaders and item sorters are going to go, so that I don't have to worry about putting them right on the edge of this and then I'll use water streams to transport the full shulker boxes into this main sorting area where I can get all the items I need for whatever I need and it's all sorted into their own chests along the edges here. Now that I have a basic idea of what I want to do with this sorting area, I can't wait to get started on some bigger farms in future episodes. But for now, this is going to be the end of this episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.